And what up guys, this is Robo Rider here. I'm here for day two at Lakeland Harley-Davidson for the demo truck to ride multiple models. And uh, I do wanna give a shout out, and I know I kept saying her name wrong in my last video. The marketing director here is Randa. I kept calling her Rhonda, so my bad. But this will be the intro for each model that I ride. Um, I will ride multiple today and I'm gonna segment up the videos based on the model. So uh, just pick whichever one you wanna watch. All right, I'm here at Lakeland Harley. Basically you come up here, it's like a menu. You pick what bike you wanna ride. And they got rules here. Y'all can pause and read. And what is your name? Lynn. Lynn, this is Lynn. She signed me up and you get a Harley black card. Yep, one of these. And so what's the process for the demo? Okay, we give you one of these. We need to see your driver's license. Uh, we scan the card, scan your license, enter your information. You hold on to this black card forever. Then whenever you're at a Harley dealership and you want to do a demo ride, you give them this, all your information's in the system, you're good to go. So it's super easy guys, and like I said, I'm gonna jump on some bikes and uh, give you guys a review. Thanks, Lynn. Thanks. All right, this is the safety part that we go over. This is part of, part of the sign-up process. You do this like a pre-ride uh, talking to, make sure we're all safe. Rooster. 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 Rooster's a man with a megaphone. Man with a megaphone. Do some plugging. <laughs> it's a really big phone. There we go. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and do this. Uh, I guess if the other person shows up, then they'll be waving at y'all driving down the parking lot, I guess. Okay, cool. All right, welcome, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, the people you see standing in front of you here with the orange and yellow vest, uh, we are Polk County Hall. Uh, we do have one Jonathan here. He uh, works with uh, Lakeland Harley Davidson, one of the Ride Academy instructors. They're helping out with these rides. Uh, we have Dr. Bob here is going to be leading this ride. The gentleman right here raising his hand. Yeah. The other one's going to be kind of intermixed in the group. The purpose for that is, in case we get separated, uh, they will take the lead uh, and get you either called back up to the group or back here to the dealership, whichever comes first. Which leads me to this. You need to obey all traffic laws. If you do get separated and you're at a red light and the light turns green, that doesn't mean that you, you just take off and rip through the gears, drive 100 miles an hour, try to catch up the group. Please don't do that. That is a violation of the law. Again, we got to detail by all laws, okay? Uh, one of the guys will come around and they'll lead you, like I mentioned a minute ago, back to the group or back here to the dealership, whichever comes first. Please make sure that uh, whenever you're riding, that uh, we ride in a stagger formation. Try to keep the group as tight as you can uh, going through uh, the roads out here because there's a lot of traffic as we all know and of course the tighter we are the less chances of somebody trying to cut it over in front of you or what have you if somebody does try to cut over in front of you let them go let, let them in uh you're not going to win a battle even with the volkswagen okay if a volkswagen bumps into you're going down the volkswagen is going to drive off on four wheels so uh you know just don't even worry about it let them in chances are they're not going to be going on the same route we are anyway so just let them go uh, once again no hot rod any that kind of thing no uh, passing no slingshotting none of that kind of stuff um, we do use hand signals. If you see something in the uh, the road, like a, a pothole, there is one of the roads that pothole has gotten deeper since yesterday. I think it just, it, you, if you stay there and watch it, I think you can see the thing growing by inch, you know, in a couple hours. It's just a huge pothole. So guys will point that out to you to be in the right track as you turn on Tom Cow Road. But, um, oh, it's a big one. It's a big one. Uh, matter of fact, you can almost see China through it, I think. Um, but anyway, um, <laughs> got Thomas all tickled over here, I tell you. Oh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, if there's not any questions, uh, go ahead and load up. Have a good time. Ooh. Thank you, Rooster. Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, so this is my first review today. We have the CVO ST Road Glide. This thing is freaking sick. I think it's gonna be my favorite bike today. So let me go ahead and hop on it. Oh my gosh. Yo, this thing is sick. Now I don't see a normal start button. Oh, I guess it's integrated, the start button is. Wow. This thing sounds awesome. It was kind of already sitting in first gear, so. What I'm not used to is a fixed fairing. <laughs> and of course, let me shut the helmet so you guys can hear me. But man, this thing is smooth. As you guys know, on my channel, I am six foot five with a 32 inch inseam. But you can see this 25th anniversary Road Glide ST CVO model. It's got the Rockford Fosgate boom booms on the front. And uh, this thing is, wow. The, I can say, so first initial thoughts on uh, the seat itself, it's a little hard. Um, and you know, this bike has 198 miles on it. So, you know, it's obviously not fully broken in. Um, and I'm, I'm at the back of the pack here, but uh, wow, I, <laughs> I love this thing. And, you know, obviously this is a kind of review ride. Um, looks like there's a little deflector thing here for the wind, which is nice. Uh, when we get up to highway speed, we can really see what it does. I can't say I'm not used to uh, floorboards and my foot being like super flat with the bike. I'm used to my foot kind of hanging off a little bit, but it's pretty cool. Um, but this is really awesome of uh, Lakeland Harley uh, hooking me up with making sure I get, you know, multiple bikes back to back. Uh, and obviously this is the first one I'm on, the freaking Road Glide ST CVO edition. Um, it looks like it also has a crash bar on it already built in. It looks like the Harley, uh, I think it's called like the, the breaker bar, breakout bar. I'm not sure of the name, but, uh, as you can see the huge dashboard in front of me, it's all digital. Uh, looks like it has a radio built in. I don't really know how to use it. Oh, all right. I can't play it too long because I'll get a YouTube strike. <laughs> Copyright. But man, this thing accelerates like butter. Uh, I will say it is super, super, super quiet. Um, you know, I think I think any Harley stock is, so I don't ever expect much with them. Um, like I said, the seat is a little bit hard. And the, uh, the floorboards are kind of right into my ankles. Oh yeah. It's still, it's taken a while for me to get used to the floorboards and all. But man, this is this is definitely a, a beautiful motorcycle. And uh, these these group rides uh, are sometimes tough because you don't know the people you're riding with. You know, I try to stay in this lane here. 
and they stay in that lane. Yeah. Uh, those of you who have been with my channel for a while, you do know that is the OG bike for me, right in front of me on the right. The uh, Sportster S, that is a 24 model. Um, looks like it's silver, not sure. But anyway, this review is about this bike. I will do some B-roll on it. Um, looks like it has like carbon fiber built in. Uh, it's got like a sparkle uh, black paint job on it, which looks pretty sick. I'll turn this up while we're stopped. At number 19, you're definitely living those glory days. Now remember guys, I ride with a full face helmet, so I wouldn't use speakers like this because I have a full face helmet. If I did use something, um, it would be something in my helmet, so. I think one thing I would change on this bike, if I ever had one like it, would definitely be um, risers because it is very low. Like my, my arms are kind of down. Um, and it could be, you know, I'm just used to my arms being up because as you guys know, on my bike, I have risers on them, on, on my Lowrider S. And um, I don't know, I, I, it doesn't feel uncomfortable. I guess it's just different. Uh, also, the exhaust is so quiet. And I know I've already mentioned that, but uh, I'm pretty sure Harley builds these bikes thinking people are gonna replace the exhaust anyway um because there's they're never really sounding good from the factory and that could be a epa thing um they got to abide by laws in multiple states because they're different in different states so they have to abide by the laws in, in those other states and make sure they're in compliance so that's likely why you hear stock exhaust is kind of meh but like here we are the passing by the front of the dealership now. And again, you guys ever want to do a demo ride? I highly, highly recommend uh, Lakeland Harley because you actually get to ride the bike for a good amount of time and get a nice feel for it. I did notice right there that a Sportster S actually has mid controls on it, unlike the stock that comes with forwards. So I wonder, did Harley change that for the 24 models? I'll have to ask someone. But uh, stock, they came with forwards, and that guy right there is riding one with mids, and that is a demo model. So it's possible the Harley truck just shipped it out with uh, the shocks on or sorry, not the shocks, the controls on the middle. So again, I will, uh, I will put in the video um, maybe some of the specs on this bike because I know this is a review. Um, honestly, all this was set up last minute with me yesterday. So obviously I didn't do my research, didn't have time because I was editing other videos. Um, I didn't have time to do research and get all the specs. And additionally, I'm demo riding, I think five or six bikes today. So obviously I couldn't retain all that information and <clears throat> it's not like I can look it up while I'm driving. But uh, I, I know this has an upgraded engine compared to the non CVO model. Um, you know, it's got more of the bells and whistles on it. Now, whether 
it's worth the price difference. I will put the price here. And that is the price of this bike. Um, I know yesterday I talked about the, uh, man, like a bug just hit me in the face. <laughs> Sorry, squirrel. I know yesterday I talked about um, the Pan America CVO and I, I liked it, but this bike, I wouldn't own, not because I don't think it's cool or it's not my style, but I can never afford it. And uh, wouldn't be something I would own, that's for sure. Oop. Says I don't have a headset enabled. Sorry, I tried to hit the blinker and that's what popped up. And here we are, this is Walt Loop making the right turn. Make sure I give him space. Always look through your turns. And this is more of uh, the part of the ride where you kind of get to get up to speed a little bit. Um, before it was kind of traffic riding and really not fun and annoying. This is gonna be a little bit more open road. And again, you know, obviously you guys clicked on this video. It is the 25th anniversary Road Glide STCVO. And uh, this thing looks super sick. I'm gonna, I, I took some B-roll of it. Or you guys have already seen the B-roll. Um, fun fact, I haven't actually shot the B-roll yet. So the B-roll is gonna be in the beginning of the video when I actually took it after the ride that you're watching. So yeah, I just inceptioned you. I just inceptioned you on YouTube. You're welcome. <laughs> I was definitely going the speed limit. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what y'all are talking about. Um, one thing I will say, the wind buffeting, uh, I do have a showy GT Air 2 helmet, and this thing has no buffeting at all. Uh, the wind is it's hitting me, it's still hitting my helmet, but it's not turbulent and not buffeting, so it's not annoying. Uh, and that makes for easier moto vlogging. But uh, this is it's a nice ride. Nice, nice, nice ride. A little too expensive for my taste. But, you know, if I was allowed to ride one, you know, multiple times, heck yeah, I would. You know what I'm saying? And remember, I'm going to be testing the other CVO models today. So look out on the playlist on my channel. The playlist I am specifically putting each model name and number on. Oh, she stalled. Oopsies. Man, I was only like not even a half halfway throttle on that. Um, <laughs> A real test of these CVOs would be, you know, when you're not in a demo ride and you can actually rip it. I say rip it as I pass a sheriff. It's okay, he was in church. <laughs> but yeah, the I, I let's say some negatives, okay? I gave you guys positives. You know, the, the great front fairing, the adjustable wind thingy up there, uh, the awesome infotainment, the Rockford Frostgate speakers, the flat floorboards, the, uh, I guess it's a crash bar. Um, the negatives, I, I don't like the handlebar grips. I mean, look at my hands. It, it looks like, you know, like a honeycomb, really tiny honeycomb pattern. Uh, and I've only been riding this thing for like not even 15 minutes. So I, I don't like the hand grips. Um, I don't like the seat. The seat is very hard. Uh, and also where the handlebars are for me, and remember I'm 6'5", I got a long torso. Uh, I would want them kind of up more. So I would definitely want some type of risers, but if you guys look at the bars, they're coming like straight at my face. So 
I would want risers that are, and bars that are kind of like more in front of me. So I don't feel like I'm, you know, leaning on my arms. So that would be the only negatives I have. Um, now, if someone said, hey, Robo Rider, I'm giving you this bike. Obviously, I'd take it. I mean, I'd take a free moped. <laughs> but uh, as far as buying it, like, I ain't got it like that. Uh, some of you researching YouTube on this bike, you may have it like that. So I hope this video is helpful. And if you can, hit the like and subscribe button uh, and hit the bell icon for future content and updates. And I would really, truly appreciate that because maybe one day I can have it like that and get a bike like this. Or Harley, you know, if you saw my video or see my video and, you know, want to hook brother up, I ain't opposed to it. <laughs> but there's very, very few modifications I would do to this bike um, as it stands. Uh, it's beautifully built, beautifully painted. I walked up to it when I was about to get on it and I'm like, I get to ride that. <laughs> and I, I said to the guy, I was like, dude, I think this is gonna be my favorite bike. But again, I'm riding, I'm riding a couple other CVO models, I think two more. Um, and I will be riding a standard Street Glide as well as a, a Breakout, I believe. And then if I have time at the end, they're gonna let me ride the Lowrider ST which as you guys know, I have a low rider S. So the ST is a little different with the fairing and stuff. But yeah, this, we've been at highway speeds just cruising here. Uh, and this thing is so smooth. If I could compare it, I feel like I'm driving a Cadillac. And those of you who've driven crappier cars and then you drive a Cadillac you know what I'm talking about where everything just feels like smooth and buttery uh, the way it handles accelerates brakes hits these bumps it's just like yeah <laughs> but I hope this video uh, is helpful to some of you who are maybe researching looking to buy this particular make and model um, as you can see, and I'm sure you've noticed throughout the video, the fairing is fixed. It doesn't move with the handlebars. Some people really like that. Uh, and I feel like it, it buffets wind or it, it breaks through wind at a even pace, I guess. Because when you're attached to the handlebars, every little wiggle you do, the fairing moves with you. And also the downside to that, when you have a fairing mounted to the handlebars is the wind can actually shake it a little bit. And that's, you know, you feel it in the handlebars, you feel it in your hands. there's the lovely hole in the road everyone sticks their foot out for <laughs> and here I am uh, I'm kind of getting on it a little bit at 65 um, I know the wind is picking up a little bit in my helmet that probably translates in the video uh, this is the, the part of the video where I feel like the crosswind gets really heavy um, and I don't know if it's this road or the buildings around it, but it's definitely a lot heavier than normal. Not too bad though. All right. Someone's jamming out on one of the bikes. <laughs> this is 
Hashtag Harley Gang From uh, Lakeland Harley Davidson Got some of their staff here that are leading the front and uh, have a watcher in the back very well organized huge kudos and again thank you so much Randa and I'm so sorry I kept calling you Rhonda on the video I posted yesterday I said your name right a few times but there was a couple other times where I said it wrong so my bad but I really appreciate you hooking this up getting me all set up for uh, this ride where I'm, I'm able to hop on these are the coveted models to ride at these Harley events because they're CVOs. And if you don't get there early or you don't have like an inside person to help you out, it's probably not a good chance you're gonna be able to ride it. Um, so I would say plan ahead for these events. Uh, the demo truck I have been told will be at Daytona next. And they have, I think they said 30 trucks, 30 semis. And I think a bunch of them will be at Daytona next. But even, uh, so shifting on this thing is, is actually pretty nice too, compared to my Lowrider S that's pretty clunky. But that could be because this is like a rich man's bike and it's got creature comforts and more luxurious. And this Amazon truck is ruining our rev bomb area. Come on, bro. And rev bomb. <laughs> But yeah, lovely city of Lakeland. Lovely ride with the awesome staff at Lakeland Harley Davidson on this awesome CVO Road Glide ST. This thing is sick, for real. What's up, bro? You're not on a Harley, man. Come on, bro. <laughs> But yeah, this thing would sound nasty with an upgraded exhaust. Uh, first thing I would change, I know I talked about positive and negatives. The literal first thing I would change on this bike is the freaking handle grips. Like, look at my hand, y'all. <laughs> it's like, while I'm holding on to this, I'm getting like annoyed. <laughs> And I don't know, I, I like that they're grippy. It's just like, I don't know, it's like too much. Like, I feel like I'm holding on to a piece of sandpaper. Like a really low count grit sandpaper. Um, but as far as ergonomics go, you know, again, I'm six foot five. I know I always say that, but some people watch videos or don't pay attention, so I say it multiple times so people know. But ergonomically, like, my legs are really well set on this. Very comfortable, minus the seat and the handlebars. The second thing I would upgrade after the, uh, the hand grips would be the seat. I currently have a Whiplash um, Slipstream, I believe is the name, or Whiplash Gambler, one of the two on my lowrider s and that thing is comfortable the seat on this thing bro my my tailbone is actually hurting now and we're about you know 15 minutes deep into this ride and uh yeah i'm feeling it in my tailbone <laughs> but who knows maybe the other models will be more comfortable we'll see And it's really cool of Harley to do things like this, especially a long ride like this, because it gives you the opportunity to really see if you want a bike. And I understand the whole marketing aspect of it to where they, you know, the whole sign up process, they get your email, they want to know if you own a bike, they want to know if you plan on buying one, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of it is marketing so they can contact you 
to buy a bike and all that, which is totally cool. Like that's a good trade off to where they get your information to where they can contact you about buying a bike. And you should only be demoing a bike if you're actually planning on buying one because that's the whole point. You're demoing to see if you like it. Uh, you don't just, you shouldn't just go demo just because you're joyriding. Um, now in my case, I'm demoing because I wanted to bring reviews to YouTube of as many models as I could actually ride and give a first person point of view of what they're like and talk about my experience specifically being six foot five and for taller riders, which is the whole premise of my channel. And so that's why I really wanted to, to get to this uh, demo truck and, and try some things out. And again, another shout out to Randa at Lakeland Harley Davidson. She hooked your brother up with getting me scheduled all day for multiple bikes uh, ahead of time. And really she's their marketing director. So she's obviously great at her job and really understands the benefit of YouTube and people that watch channels and content. So again, a huge shout out to them. Um, I will be on another bike with another review. That video will be added to the playlist. Um, this playlist will specifically have this model on it though. Man, look at the size of that air cleaner, bro. <laughs> I always have to look down to make sure my foot is underneath the, uh, the gear shifter because I'm not used to floorboards, man. Keep throwing me off. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Lovely little stroll around Lakeland. And we are almost back to the dealership now. And again, I know I said it before in the video, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please do so. Um, my goal is to continue to grow this channel. Um, we, per we surpassed the 500 sub mark, I think last week, and I'm looking to surpass the 1000 sub mark. Um, and why is that important? Well, I'm able to monetize my channel and all those ads that you guys see at the beginning in, vi in videos or in the middle, uh, it actually, it, it's like a revenue share with the content creators. So it's not a lot of money, but at least I'll be able to monetize my channel and, uh, you know, continue to do this. And hopefully I continue to grow like other channels. I don't know if you guys watch like Hurt to Wheels, Blockhead, Shade Tree Surgeon. Um, basically, they all have great channels and they get they get invited to events and stuff like that. And I, I you know, I hope to do that one day. So, again, this is the wrap up of the ride and we will be hopping on another one next. I don't know which one yet, but I appreciate you guys watching. And if this is the model bike that you're interested in, go buy it. I mean, it's super expensive, but if you got it like that, I'd say buy it y'all. Boom, baby thing in neutral kickstand down and that is the ride look at the shocks I didn't even look at that boom baby 121 high output